winter. The vocals on the original fades. version of Strawberry Fields presented me with an interesting challenge and provided me with another objective for this project. That is, how do you achieve sped up and slowed down tape effects? The way I set about achieving this was to use the Roland Very phrase, or if you like, auto-tune. A number of experiments were tried, but the way I set about trying to achieve this effect was to pitch the whole track up four octaves for the first section and down four octaves for the second. This was achieved by using the Roland Very phrase as well. produced a lot of digital artifacts or distortions. To combat this, I programmed the melody line into Sonar using a piano VST. This helped me pitch the vocal. This left me with a slightly out of pitch vocal, which I repitched to the correct key using once again the Roland Very phrase. Finally, to add a double track effect to the vocal as on the original, I used an Nothing artificial double track real. effect. Let me take you down, cause I'm going to strawberry fields. Nothing is real, and nothing to get hung about. Whilst it can be argued that it sounds nothing like the tape effect heard on the original, it however can be argued that it is a different and new and interesting effect. This once again gives credence to this idea of a new digital paradigm, or if you like, we can add a new production technique to our engineer's bag of tricks. someone, but it all works out. It doesn't matter much to me. Always now, sometimes think it's me. But you know I know and it's a dream The I final thing that needs to be said about the vocals and the role and very phrase is its corrective abilities. That Without this I tool I could not have finished the vocals. This was because of John Lennon's extremely difficult vocal phrasing and because of repitching the track. The role and very phrase allowed me to move the phrasing so it would fit. Also it allowed me to correct a couple of pitching errors. Always know sometimes think it's me. But you know I know and it's a dream The guitars were the final thing that I tackled on Strawberry Fields. Although I'm unsure, I believe the rhythm guitar heard at the start of the track on the original in the first section was DI'd. It was also put through a Leslie speaker. The Leslie speaker is a famed effect. It is in fact a speaker in a cabinet that spins round as the audio passes through it. To simulate this effect I found a freeware plug-in version. This plug-in worked really well. It helps give credence to the idea of having a whole studio on your computer. The next thing that needs to be talked about in terms of the rhythm guitar is 32-bit floating point. This in theory gives us back our internal headroom. When mixing inside your digital audio workstation, as you can see from the picture, the waveform is clipping. But when you listen to the guitar, no digital distortion is evident. This gives us a valuable insight into digital audio and how to tackle and record digital audio as an engineer. Although we are not getting the same effect as driving audio through a mixing console, to be able to have the maximum amount of headroom whilst you mix is invaluable. And this, once again, is an indicator of how far we have come in terms of digital audio recordings. This leaves us with the lead guitar parts. At this stage, I had not purchased my Vox Amp emulator, and so my choice of amp simulator was a generic one, included with sonar. This is set to British Crunch. I've also put a slight amount of tremolo on the guitar. This is in keeping with the Vox Amp, which also has a tremolo knob on it. The final thing that I did was add some ambient reverb to the overall sound. One thing that needs to be noted is that the initial guitar refrain was recorded almost one note at a time. This was because the tempo was too fast for me to play it as a whole. This is why I put the tremolo on that refrain. This, I think, hides the deficiencies that are obvious when you hear it without the tremolo. What it also does is add credence to the argument that with digital technology you can take an average musician and fool the listener into believing that they are more than competent.
Because presented me with another set of challenges, the first being finding a suitable harpsichord sound. Whilst it is not an electric harpsichord on mine as used in the original, it is a recorded harpsichord. This has been compressed into the sound font file format. For those who do not know what the sound font file format is, it is a form of sample file used in the early days of MIDI and used in general MIDI sound modules. By the time I had got to this point, I realised that these tracks were going to be less Beatle-like and going to be more modern interpretations. This has turned out to be a good thing because it has taught me that it is not the equipment that makes great recordings, but the production. The outcome of this project has been to understand the importance of experimentation. Whether that experimentation and the outcomes have come from trying to replicate production techniques from the 60s or they have come from necessity, understanding this has been the key to the success of this project. To try and replicate the electric harpsichord sound, I've placed a filter over the top. This is to try and simulate the tinny sound as heard on the original. I've also used a generous amount of quantize and velocity on this track. I shall talk more about the effect that this has on the track later. Suffice to say, although it may not sound like someone has played the harpsichord, when mixed into the whole of the track, it does have a digital feel and it adds to the futuristic sound of the overall song. At this point I decided to sequence the guitar part rather than play it, once again using the Dimension Pro and the patch Clean Gibson. This was because I could not find a chord chart. Although I had the tab, without the chord chart I found it impossible to work out the fingering. By this point I had purchased the Guitar Rig 4 and was using the Vox Amp emulator fed into a Leslie speaker effect. Whilst once again it can be argued it sounds nothing like a played guitar, it does however add to the overall futurism of the track. Also, without a real Vox Amp, it is hard to tell what the emulator does to the audio. Once again though, what it does do is add a digital flavour, and this also adds to the futuristic sound of the overall track. As has already discussed offered me the chance to test the audio snap palette. It also continues the argument that modern digital recording and digital audio workstations can make average musicians into more than competent and passable musicians. This is even more so on this track, and this is because I played and recorded the verse and the chorus part once, I then cut, copy and pasted it three times into the correct places in the song. This left me with a conundrum of what to do in the coda. I decided to use a synth bass patch on the VST instrument Rapture. This I believe really worked. It continues the theme of futurism that this track seemed to be taking on. Because the world is round, it turns me At this point, it became clear I was not going to be able to replicate the Beatles' vocals for this track. Because the first thing that I decided to do was use three different choir voices and layer the chords that make up the R's to make up the nine vocal parts. I've then added a filter which gives the choirs an effect that feels like a tape play button has been pressed. For the vocal, I had decided to sing the main line once. I would copy and paste that two more times, giving me three main voices. I then copy and pasted the main vocal line once more and added the roll and vary phrase effect to this track. I then proceeded to fix a couple of pitching errors. I then pitched this track up two octaves. I decided to fix this track and not the others because this would give it a subtle difference in the overall vocal mix. I then copy and pasted that Vox track twice more, giving me six voices. Next, I copy and pasted the original box, applied the very phrase again, and pitched that up four octaves. This I then copy and pasted two more times, all in all giving me nine voices. Finally, I copied the original box and placed the special VST effect spectral transformer over it. 
This effect has four different effects built into the one plugin. In this case, I used the vocal transposer three times and pitched the vocal up and down using my ear to tune the overall effect. I then used the effect liberally to emphasize certain words. After the completion of the tracks, one final experiment was conducted. This was in relation to tape effects and speeding things up and slowing things down. Strawberry Fields was recorded at two different tempos. This was to simulate the sped up feel of section one of the track and simulate the slowed down effect of the second part of the track. I did this in the mastering stage. I employed the audio snap palette and time stretched the audio to fit one tempo. In this case, 98 BPM. Let me take you down, cause I'm going to... As you can hear from the combined master files, that is the pre-master version and the version after it's been time stretched, there is some cone filtering going on. This suggests that the audio has been stretched to fit one tempo. As you can hear from this passage, and if you compare it to the final finished master, it has indeed created a lagging feel. This combined with the pitch voices have created something new. Once again, it may not be the intended effect, but what it has created to my ears is just as interesting. To further emphasize this, because it was recorded too fast, the final master felt rushed. By employing the audio snap palette, I was able to slow the track down, and indeed it added nearly a whole minute to the final track. Whilst it did not pitch shift the track down as would be the case if we were using tape, the final result to me is amazing. What really comes through on both tracks is the quantize and velocity effects used on the virtual instruments. By slowing things down or speeding things up, it helps emphasize those effects. The final thing that needs to be said in regards to tape effects is that two DAWs, to my knowledge, now have a very speed button. This is to simulate tape very speed. Whilst my DAW does not have this, what this has done is made me experiment to try and achieve those effects. This I think is more important than having a one button fits all attitude. Because I did not have this button, I had to experiment and because of those experiments I have created new digital effects, new digital production techniques and a new digital paradigm. Thank you. Oh,